Well, no snow here, but we've got the latest on what happened in the Southern District of Illinois Federal Courts when it comes to litigation against Illinois' gun ban. Good morning. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY. And the headline is that a federal judge has denied the state's request to delay a response to a case brought by the Illinois Gun Rights Alliance and Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois. Good morning. Uh, Looking at the forecast across the state, of course, some places got snow heavy winds, uh, sleet, mixture. Uh, We didn't really get that here in central Illinois. We'll uh, be updating you all throughout the morning uh, on that forecast as we do. But, uh, you know, we've got to get into it with uh, the latest in the situation with Illinois now, uh, close to a a month and a week, close to five weeks now, that the state has had a ban on semi-automatic weapons and magazines over certain capacities, meaning you cannot go and buy a gun that's uh, on a list of 170 plus or purchase parts like, you know, pistol grips or uh, barrel sheaths or uh, a variety of other things or even magazines. You can't go buy them. Uh, And starting October 1st, you are going to be having to register your firearms with Illinois State Police in the deadline of January 1st, 2024. Now, there have been a lot of lawsuits filed to block this from uh, further implementation. In state courts, you've got temporary restraining orders that have been issued for thousands of people. And that uh, is uh, moving forward with the possibility that cases could be consolidated and that's state level court. But in the federal courts, you have four different cases being handled by a single judge in the Southern District and uh, some interesting movement this week. If you recall, on Monday, uh, you had the federal judge order the state in three of the cases, the Illinois State Rifle Association's case, the um, case brought by the National Shooting Sports Foundation and the case that was out of Crawford County State Court that was transferred to federal court. The judge telling the plaintiffs uh, in in that case that the state is going to have to deliver a list of all the items banned, not the guns banned, but all of the items banned. So that was on Monday. The fourth case from the Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois, also the Illinois Gun Rights Alliance, uh, that is only focusing on challenging the state's gun ban and parts ban, while the other three cases are looking at guns and magazines being banned, challenging the constitutionality of that. So on Monday, the judge told in the three cases the state they have to show a report of all items banned. And in the fourth case, Federal Firearms Licensees of Illinois, On Tuesday, the state requested that it have a delay in responding to that fourth case. Well, that judge that's overseeing all four cases yesterday issuing an order denying the state's request to delay their response. And I connected with Todd Vandermeide. He is a a longtime gun rights advocate. He's also the host of Freedom's Steel on YouTube. A lot of you may be watching his videos uh, with uh, regular updates, but um, we chatted a bit about the the order that was uh, posted and what exactly this means for the uh, for the ongoing litigation in federal court. So uh, today, the judge entered an order denying the motion for an extended time. So this case is one of four with the preliminary injunction pending regarding the constitutionality of Illinois House Bill fifty four seventy one which is codified at 720 ILCS 5-24-1.9. Although these cases have not been consolidated, the court wishes to keep them on a similar timetable. Additionally, the Office of the Attorney General, who recently entered in this case, represents the state defendants and the other three matters that have deadlines of February 28th, March 1st, and March 2nd, respectively. So there is no hardship by denying this extension. As such, defendants shall respond to 28 first motion for preliminary injunction on or before March 2nd. Signed, Stephen P. McGlynn. So that's uh, Todd Vandermeid uh, connecting with him yesterday. Uh, he read out the order that was posted, uh, essentially saying that, listen, the state already has to respond to these three other cases. Uh, it's not going to harm them at all to respond to this fourth case by no later than March 2nd. Uh, and it's interesting that we're going to see this unfold in the next couple of weeks here. But an interesting word there as well in the judge's order was the state's not going to have any hardship. Well, who exactly is suffering a hardship right now? Uh, again, Todd Vandermeid uh, addressing this issue yesterday when I chatted with him um, about the order. 
Uh, well, <laughs> I think the the problem is that you've got a law that is a direct infringement on the Second Amendment, and you've got the gun shops and the the citizens of Illinois that are suffering the most because they can't acquire stuff. The shops can't sell stuff. And depending on how long this drags out, it's going to kind of like be COVID when everything was shut down. You know, and you saw a lot of small mom and pop businesses uh, go out of business because they just couldn't sustain things without a revenue stream. And we're seeing reports that up to 60% of inventory has been pulled off the shelves uh, for a lot of gun shops because um, so you know, I think that it's the gun shops and the Illinois residents that are being harmed the most at this juncture. So to recap, you've got uh, the uh, federal judge in the Southern District essentially saying that uh, these four cases, though they're not combined, they do want the four cases to be essentially on the same timeline. So they have yet to officially consolidate these cases. Is that the trajectory that we're going to see in the federal cases? We've already seen a motion in the state level cases. What about the federal cases? Are we going to have that motion to ultimately consolidate those cases? Because it looks like the judge, Stephen McGlynn, in the Southern District, he is, uh, you know, the combined judge over all four of these cases so he wants them to have a similar timeline but what's the the trajectory of the possibility of having those consolidated and what's the significance of that uh again todd vandermeid uh you can check out his uh youtube channel freedom steel uh but a long time nra uh contract lobbyist retired uh now uh helping out with the federal firearms licensees of illinois lawsuits uh his his thoughts on the trajectory of all of this I think that's what we're going to see at this juncture right now. There has not been uh, a motion by the state to consolidate these cases. And three of the cases are guns and magazines. The case that I've been helping on is guns and parts. We've talked about that. We have a different take on parts of this, no pun intended, uh, that, you know, we think there's a representation here to be made. And I think that based on the judge's last order directing them to talk about every item banned under 24 1.9, um, that's a direct result of them reading the brief that we put forward in our motion for a preliminary injunction. Because we go into some detail about guns and parts, citing Remington 1187s and Ruger 1022s and the attachments and parts and the like that are uh, that are going to be affected by this and that we've got a couple of doozies to drop yet that haven't we're holding those back a little bit uh we are very interested in seeing what the state provides in their uh, response to the judge well, we're also uh, interested in seeing that as well, and uh, we'll bring you all of that as we get it. Uh, following this in real time, uh, updates seem to be coming out daily, and we will be giving you those updates, not just on that case, not just on the three other federal cases, but also the state-level cases and uh, how those are going to play out, because here we are now nearly five weeks into Illinois' gun ban and a stack of lawsuits against the ban on semi-automatic guns and magazines, and uh, the uh, again, October 1st is coming up quicker than you realize and uh, that's when the window opens for people to register their firearms uh but i also chatted uh earlier this week with dan eldridge from max and shooter sports and uh, he is one of the plaintiffs as well uh as part of this lawsuit uh, against the states with the federal firearms licensees of illinois uh chatted with him i'll share that coming up so stay tuned it is springfield's buck and I'm Greg Bishop, and we're hearing now about the uh, ongoing litigation in federal courts. You uh, got the updates earlier about the federal judge telling the states that they have to respond to a fourth lawsuit by March 2nd. Again, you've got the State Rifle Association's lawsuits, the Crawford County lawsuits, the uh, National Shooting Sports Foundation lawsuit. Those have already had the judge order the state to produce a list of all items banned in their response, respectively, February 28th, March 1st, and March 2nd. In the fourth case, the state tried to get a delay. They filed that on Tuesday. Uh, but on Thursday, yesterday, the federal judge said, no, I'm denying that motion for a delayed response because you guys already have to respond to these three other cases, so it's not going to harm you at all to respond to the fourth case. Well, uh, one of the, the plaintiffs in that fourth case is uh, Dan Eldridge. He is the owner of Max and Shooter Sports and Displays, and he talks about gun stores and how they, you know, there's a lot of mom and pop shops out there. Well, um, dealers in Illinois 
um, aren't one size fits all. So there's a, a broad spectrum of dealers here. Uh, the guys whose business is built around long guns are uh, really hurting. Uh, their business has gone basically to zero. Um, our rifle business has gone basically to zero. You know, there's no rifle hunting in Illinois. So you, you, the modern sporting rifle is really your whole um, rifle sales uh, channel. Um, it's also incredibly time consuming for us to answer all the questions that people have. Uh, we try to direct them to our blog at maxandshooters.com where we keep them abreast of the status of the various cases and uh, answer the questions about oh, is this legal, is that legal, when, how, where. Uh, so there's, it, it's created a lot of work and, and cut business substantially. And uh, I asked uh, Dan Eldridge about uh, just kind of giving some some anecdotes of sorts about just how much business is being lost. <laughs> Uh, I just got off the phone with another dealer whose business is primarily based around rifles. He does some handguns, but he's gone to basically zero. Um, and, and you know, if this continues, well, it's going to put some people out of business, which becomes the basis for uh, seeking um, injunctive relief here. And I think we're going to get it. You know, if you think about the tests for um, receiving a uh, preliminary injunction, it's it's four tests. One of them is the plaintiff likely to succeed on the merits. Well, yes. Um, is the plaintiff likely to suffer irreparable harm in the absence of primary uh, preliminary relief? Well, absolutely. You know, if you kill a business, it's very hard to uh, bring it back to life. So uh, I think that we're we're looking pretty good, particularly with the judge's order two days ago. Uh, I think we're looking very good for um, uh, some kind of injunctive relief here in the in the next month or so. And again, he's referencing the order to require the state to provide a list of all items banned, all items banned, uh, and that includes parts, you know, gun parts. Uh, and and a lot of you out there who have rifles, you know that sometimes you need that rifle serviced, right? It's a machine essentially, uh, and it uh, allows for you know different parts to uh, you got to replace them and, and do some things. But uh, Eldridge talks about how even gunsmithing right now, a lot of uncertainty about that. Correct. And uh, so in our case, I've got a full-time employee who is a gunsmith, and we've simply had to find other things for him to do while we wait this out. And that's just further you know, sunk costs, um, unrecoverable harm that's being done to my business. And uh, Eldridge also uh, sharing about just his general sense of how this is all going to play out, given, you know, Monday's ruling that they have to provide a list of all items banned to the plaintiffs, and the state has to respond to that by at least March 2nd, if not February 28th, and on another case. Uh, but when I talked with Eldridge, it was before uh, they uh, they got the, um, the filing to uh, delay it and the judge denying to delay it. But here's just uh, Eldridge's uh, sense of how this is going to go just a lot of uncertainty out there and that's why we're trying to be as, as efficient as we can about getting the information out um, the lawsuits that are out there there are nearly four principal lawsuits in the southern district um, the one that I'm involved with with the Illinois Gun Rights Alliance and FFLIL we deliberately chose to go after guns and parts rather than guns and magazines and that was a deliberate choice because it really exposes how incredibly broad this ban is. And with the judge's uh, order on February 13th, I think that that speaks directly to the parts and accessories issue, um, that, that the state is compelled to uh, produce illustrative examples of each and every item banned. Well, what are they going to do? Staple a Brownells catalog to their uh, to their response for the motion for preliminary injunction? I mean, this is, this is it, it really... Uh, it, it really puts an exclamation point on how broad uh, they they wrote this thing. It also further highlights why we chose not to give them any guidance, um, any subject matter expertise when they were talking about uh, drafting this law. They don't know what they're doing. They don't have any subject matter expertise 
uh, all they have is emotions, and this is what you get. So we'll uh, we'll be watching this closely uh, as we have since uh, before the measure passed, while it was being debated, after it was signed, and every step along the way, all the different lawsuits that have been in federal courts, in state courts, and uh, we'll keep you updated here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. Uh, and uh, be sure to follow along, Bishop on Air, on Twitter, Facebook, Facebook, YouTube, uh, and uh, you can find me, email me, bishoponair at gmail.com.